Are you currently wondering what membership plugin or platform to use? If so, this episode is for you because we are sharing our top tips for researching your membership tech. You're listening to the Membership Geeks podcast, bringing you proven practical tips and advice from the leading experts on growing a successful membership business each and every week. And now here are your hosts, Mike Morrison and Callie Willows. Well, hello there. You're listening to episode 360 of the Membership Geeks podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Mike Morrison of the Membership Geeks, joined by my fellow geek, the one and only Callie Willows. Hello there. And today we're talking tech, particularly researching and trying to figure out what tech to use for your membership. Now, there's a lot of options on the market when it comes to your membership tech. We're not going to dive in to the nitty gritty about specific features and all that sort of stuff. What we want to do is share some tips and advice on some of the things that can derail you or lead to bad decisions, or maybe you might not have thought about when you're going through that research phase, that research stage for trying to figure out what tech to use just to help you avoid some pitfalls or taking recommendations that you shouldn't really be taking. So the first big tip I would give anyone who is trying to decide what membership plugin or platform they should use, or even should I use a plugin for WordPress or do I use an all-in-one platform? That first tip would be to be wary when you ask for recommendations in online groups like Facebook groups or other communities. Now, generally, that is some, that's one of the first things people will do, right? Like, we own a very popular Facebook group for membership owners, and pretty much every day, there's that question, what membership plugin should I choose? Yeah, or well, what's the best membership software to use? Yeah, and generally, the replies will come in saying, this plugin is hands down the best one, or you definitely need to use this one, or don't use this, avoid this one like the plague, it was rubbish when I used it. If you ask this question, if you go into a Facebook group or an online community and you ask for that recommendation, which plugin or platform to choose, everyone's going to have an opinion and most of them are going to be different. If you're coming into this without a great deal of knowledge, without a great deal of specificity, it's near impossible to get a definitive answer when you try to crowdsource opinions, particularly in the likes of Facebook groups. And a lot of people who respond with these very definite, very emphatic answers and recommendations, they might not have the experience or the knowledge of the different options that are available in the market to actually give you an informed recommendation. And also they don't know what you need. Yeah, they probably, they don't know what you need. They maybe just have very limited experience with just one thing, or perhaps they've had a very bad experience with one plugin that they're not going to be short or shy at sharing with you. So right away, they might not give you a recommendation for what to use, but because they had a negative experience, they'll jump right in, definitely, definitely avoid this plugin, or they'll trash other people's recommendations because of their experience. But you have to keep in mind with stuff like that, that's just one person's experience. They may have used the software years ago when it was in its infancy. They might not be very tech savvy, and it might actually be a plugin where a little bit of extra technology is needed. Or my personal favourite, they were trying to use it for something that it doesn't actually do. Yeah, yeah, they're trying to, they were trying to fit a round peg into a square hole, didn't quite fit, and now at every opportunity, whenever someone like you comes in asking for recommendations, they'll jump on it and say, well, I'll tell you what you shouldn't use. Like, this is the kind of things that you're going to see a lot of when you do ask for recommendations in groups and in communities, particularly when it's a broad ask a broad question. A lot of the advice you get um, won't be qualified advice. And actually, a lot of people, they're just sharing their opinions on the one thing they've used. Hey, I've used this and it's been great for me. But you're not getting the full picture. And quite often, those opinions, those recommendations, they're coming from people who maybe have very limited experience or, you know, they've been told by their coach or their web developer that, you know, this tool is the absolute best. And they've just carried that opinion with them without any actual insight into whether that's true. So this isn't to say don't ask for recommendations. It's just to say, if you're going to ask for recommendations in communities, be specific about what you need and also take a lot of the feedback, particularly the negative feedback about stuff you should avoid or 
definitely don't do this. I use this and it's the worst thing ever. Take that with a hefty, hefty dose of salt. That will save your sanity. Definitely. And you also want to consider that content creators that are writing about or recommending particular membership options are 90% of the time going to be paid affiliates for those softwares that they're recommending. Bloggers, vloggers, other content creators will be affiliates of pretty much any membership plugin, piece of software, anything that they're recommending, publishing reviews on, they'll gain a commission based on your, you actually buying from their link. Yeah. So it's not to say don't utilize these reviews, but be aware that usually the people that are posting these reviews or posts on social media there's a financial incentive there for them to do so. And you might look at that and say, well, you've got reviews on your website. And we do. Yeah. But we have reviews of multiple options. And yes, we are affiliates for them. But we're not recommending one over another. No. We try and be as unbiased as possible. Yeah, we're affiliates for everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we recommend what is best for particular circumstances. And there's plenty of other people that do that too. But there's also people that will very heavily promote just one platform or plugin. Yeah, that's usually the determining factor. If you have a site like ours, and, and there are other tech sites or WordPress sites, where there's lots of different reviews of lots of different options, then chances are, yes, they're going to be affiliates, but they'll be affiliates for everything that they talk about and therefore that kind of levels the playing field because you're not incentivized to push one and not others because you get a commission anyway because what you're doing is you are saving that software company from having to spend the money on paid ads so that comes to you in exchange for the time and resources it takes you to obviously write and promote that content you as the buyer you don't pay any extra and actually yeah if it's like us or if it's like other popular WordPress blogs where they will review pretty much every membership plugin, then the fact that there's an affiliate commission there generally doesn't lead to bias because when you're getting a commission on everything, there's no reason to incorrectly push one thing over the other. But the big, big litmus test is, is this person or is this website that's promoting this tool or software is that the only one they're pushing? Is that the only one they're talking about? Do they have 20 articles talking about how great this one thing is? Or do they have 20 individual articles talking about 20 individual different things? Yeah, and be overwhelmingly cautious of anything that somebody is giving a 100% glowing recommendation to mm -hmm. because we've been in this space no long enough every plugin and platform has issues there yes. is no perfect option so if it all seems a little bit too good to be true then you know look for the affiliate link definitely definitely so yeah just be aware that when money is changing hands you do have to look a little closer at how that might be affecting the recommendation. Yeah. And it doesn't mean it's invalid. There's no. can still get a lot of good information from those reviews. Just don't, again, use it as the sole reason for purchasing one option above another. Yes, and, you know, look for multiple reviews from multiple different places. And are they all saying the same thing? Yes, exactly. So, again, it's applying that liberal dose of salt and just putting a little thought into where is this recommendation coming from? Where is the, the driving thing behind this review? Again, the litmus test, are they just pushing one thing and there's no real critical thought behind why this thing is being pushed? It's just, this is my favorite, this is the best. The people who run it are amazing and everything they write is just about this one option. Or are they actually a, a reviewer or a resource that clearly is more about having that wider range, that wider coverage of the of all the options of the, the market as a whole? So definitely, definitely something to think on there. It's also important to recognize that even if there is a best solution on the market, and again, as Kelly said, we've been doing this for so long now, like there is not a single plugin, even our favorites, even the ones we use, there's issues with it. Yeah, and it's not the right option for everyone. And we're quite clear about that when, you know, it's something we've had to deal with a lot in the academy is people coming in and essentially just wanting to use what we use yeah. because we use it. And so therefore it must be the best. And we love our option, you know, we, we love our software, but it's not the right option for everybody. No. So that third tip, recognize that the best solution on the market might not be the right one for you 
Because the truth is there is no definitive one size fits all solution. The best membership plugin or the best membership platform is the one that solves your specific problem. And that is what's missing from most of the advice that you will get when you are researching what software to use. The consideration for well, what do you actually need it to do? Because a plugin that might be widely considered to be the strongest in the market could actually be bottom of the list when it comes to what is suitable for you because you might have some real specific needs for your project and it just might happen that those needs are the only things that that plugin doesn't do. So, you know, whatever the best option is, the thing that gets all the five-star reviews, the thing that everyone recommends, just know that you don't go with that just because everyone says it's the best. It might not be the right one for you. So keep that in mind. So yeah, that third tip is really just to kind of move away from this obsession with finding the best. You know, don't ask what is the best membership plugin because even if you are able to get a pretty strong consensus on what everyone else thinks is the best for you, it might actually be the worst. Yeah, what you're looking for is the best membership solution for you. And in order to do that, you need to be clear on what it is that you actually need and are looking for. And the only way to find that best solution to your particular problem, if you're asking in a public forum, is to be as specific as you can about what you need. What features do you need? What integrations do you need? And before you do that, you also need to be aware that you will not find an off the shelf membership plugin or software that will 100% satisfy your requirements exactly the way you want it to. That's just not how it goes when dealing with off the shelf solutions. And knowing this from the get go will save you some frustrations and a lot of time trying to find that absolutely 100% perfect fit. Yeah, nothing is going to have 100% the features that work 100% the way that you want them to just off the shelf without any customization or add-ons or anything like that it's you know if that's what you're thinking you're you're looking for you're unicorn hunting and if, if you've got really simple needs like you literally just need something to, that's going to protect your your content yeah. and uh, give a login then yeah but even sure, then but even then it's not always just the what it's the how yeah. you know you have to make some compromises yeah, definitely. And so to do that, you want to make a list of your requirements and share them when you ask your questions about what will be the best membership solution for you. So you want to consider questions like, will your content be available all at once? Is it going to be regularly added to? Do you need an automated drip feed? Is your membership going to have multiple tiers? And will you offer self-service accounts to your members? What payment providers do you need to integrate with? PayPal and Stripe are pretty much basics these days, but other less common options may limit the membership softwares that are available to you. Similarly, what email providers do you need to integrate with? And do you need to integrate with anything like forums or social networking tools? And are there other features you want integrating in the site, like course plugins, affiliate systems, gamification? Think about all of these features that you want and need. And also think about how tech savvy actually are you. You might want lots of bells and whistles, but if you can't actually put that together, you're either going to need to look at a developer helping you or a platform that maybe doesn't have quite as many features as you need, but will enable you to get up and running quickly. And that ties into your budget as well. Have you got some budget to actually spend on a top tier software or do you need to start with a lower cost option and see if you can upgrade later? And finally, something a lot of people don't think about is what stats do you actually want reports on? What do you actually want to be able to track in your membership? This is an area where a lot of membership plugins and softwares are severely lacking. But if this is something that's really important for you, you need to make sure that your software can provide that or has, or has integrations that can. Yeah, definitely. So if you're asking for recommendations, whether it's within a forum or a Facebook group or whether it's to a web developer or to another membership owner, these are the kind of things you need to be giving them details on. Shouldn't just be, I need a, mem a membership plugin, what's the best one? It should be I'm trying to find a membership plugin. This is what I need. I'm thinking multiple membership tiers. I was going to use PayPal for the payments. I currently use Active Campaign for my emails. I wasn't planning on having a forum. Like, this is the kind of information you need to give people. And the more specific you can be, the clearer you are on what you need, the more chance you'll actually find a product. A, pla a platform, a plugin that fits those needs. And a top tip here is actually think about things that you might think are obvious, 
but actually they're not common membership features. So a common one that we see more and more is people wanting a magazine style membership where actually somebody only gets the content from the day that they join. So if they join in July, they get July's content onwards. They don't have anything from January to June. Now, on the one hand, you know, that makes sense, but it's not something most membership plugins no, or only, software are available for. There's only there's one? About three now. There's a three now that do that. That do that. So it's something that a lot of people will think, well, this is an obvious membership feature because I've yeah. seen it used, but actually it really impacts what your software choices will be. Definitely. And if you're not sure, then again, within the questions that you're doing, within the information you're researching, that's something you want to have answered. Is this a common feature? Is this something that will be easily achievable? Is this something for which I will need to have something custom developed? You know, just this morning was seen in the Facebook group, someone kind of saying, I'm really struggling. I've got such basic needs for my membership. I'm just not sure what my membership plugin should be. And then they start listing the needs. And actually, several of them are really, really highly specific, difficult things to do. The stuff that you think should be easy, might not actually be commonplace within the membership market. So finding out and just asking the questions, is this something I'm going to be able to do first and foremost, before you then start kind of looking at, okay, if I know this is achievable, this is a feature I need. These are the systems I need to integrate with. This is my budget. I'm not very tech savvy, so it needs to be easy to use. All that kind of information when you're doing your research is going to ensure that you get better recommendations and make it just far more likely that you land on something that fits those requirements without the chance or the risk that you have a nasty surprise after you've bought the plugin and then find out, oh, okay, I actually need it to do this, that, and the other, and it doesn't. Why didn't anyone warn me? Because you never told them. So there's obviously a whole bunch of other things to consider and go into when it comes to finding the right membership plugin or the right membership platform. We've covered a lot of that on past episodes. We also have a fantastic free resource, which is essentially our buyer's guide to WordPress membership plugins that you can download over at membershipgeeks.com slash plugins. And that gives you some other best practices that will help you to really figure out what the right choice is for you, as well as providing a comparison of the most popular membership plugins on the market, feature by feature. But this episode, really, we really want to kind of cover a lot of the stuff that doesn't get pointed out, or maybe people don't realize will factor in when you're trying to do your research, especially when you're asking for recommendations, when you're asking for help and advice. So if you are at that stage, whether it's building a new membership or whether it's switching to a, a different platform, perhaps you've had your membership running for a while and you're looking to make a switch, then hopefully this has given you a little something to think about before you just accept the advice that you're given, before you post in that Facebook group and before you start that research process of trying to find your membership tech. All right, that is it from us for another week. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, hit us up on social at Membership Geeks, right across pretty much everywhere social media is these days. I think we're at Membership Geeks. <laughs> um, let us know how you get on in your quest to find the right membership tech. We'll be back again next week with another episode of the Membership Geeks podcast. Bye for now. If you enjoyed this week's episode of the Membership Geeks podcast, we invite you to check out membershipacademy.com. Membership Academy is the original membership about memberships, and it's the essential resource for anyone at any stage of starting, growing, and running a successful online membership business. Whether you're still trying to figure out what your idea is going to be and you need some help making it a reality, or whether your website is already up and running and you're looking for ways to grow and attract new members, then Membership Academy can help you to get to the next level. Not only do you get access to our step-by-step -step membership roadmap, our extensive training library and exclusive member-only discount and tools, you'll also become part of our supportive, active community of membership owners that will help you along the way in your journey with feedback, encouragement, and advice. All of this and more make Membership Academy the number one place to be for anyone looking to start, manage, and grow a successful membership business. 
Check it out and join the community at membershipacademy.com.